390 Wagon Master here. Hey, I want to show you guys a radio that's in my collection. I'm going to take a look at the Superstar 3900, and this is what I would call a Euro version, and yes, I get it. Um, pretty much every export radio is a Euro, Euro version to uh, us Americans over here, and um, I just... Uh, I think this is kind of an interesting one. This is a more modern uh, unit. In fact, as far as I'm, uh, as far as I know, this is probably like one of the last Superstar 3900s produced. Um, this was imported into the U.S. by my good buddy Mark, a uh, stoner owner down in Georgia. These were imported from France, and um, with the printing and whatnot on this particular radio, I believe this was um, Polish for the Polish market. And it has the European certification and all of this kind of stuff by the importer, uh, the declaration of conformity and whatnot. And that would explain why this has actually a built-in low-pass filter for the output section, which I thought was really neat. Okay, so as you guys know, these EPT3600 boards, there's many, many, many versions of these. Um, and this is the EPT3615C. So, uh, from what I gather, this is a MOSFET radio, and generally the rule of thumb, as far as I understood, was if you have blue LEDs in it, this is a MOSFET radio. If you have the, uh, which has IRF 520s, it's one IRF 520 driving an IRF 520. If you have a Galaxy radio or something like that with red LEDs in it, then it's the old school driver final setup, like a what was that, like a 2166 driver and a 2312 final or something like that. Or if it's a white LED um, and a red LED, then that would be also the old school um, setup. So as you can see, we're kind of drifting around here a little bit. I just turned this thing on. So anyway, it's going to have to warm up for a minute. Well, let's take a look at some front panel features. First of all, we have volume squelch, RF gain, uh, mic gain, SWR Calibrate. This is a full featured radio, of course, so it has an SWR bridge in it. We have our mode switch here, which is, I think, is funny because they have it marked as, what was that, dimmer? So that's pretty interesting. Um, ABC. In low position, this would be ABC, and then in high position, DEF. And then we have our mode control here, our mode switch, so CW, FM, AM, upper, lower, sideband. Yes, this does work on single sideband. Um, it's a little chirpy. Or I'm, I'm sorry, on CW. It's a little chirpy, but it works, so that's not a problem. And then, of course, we have our fine and coarse clarifier. Some versions of this, the coarse was locked, and I'm sorry, the coarse was unlocked and the fine was locked. This version is unlocked both ways. Uh, thank goodness, because... You know, this has the dreaded Galaxy Cobra 148 problem. If you had this straight up and you had this parked in the center detent right here, you would be off frequency like this. See that? So you would have to kind of run it just slightly off the detent. But the problem was on a lot of these radios is this would just kind of slip back in. So you'd get it centered on center slot and then it would just kind of slip back in. So thank goodness this one's unlocked. All right, this is your meter control switch here. So calibrate SWR and SRF, noise blank or ANL, which is uh, highly effective in all of these superstars. And then our tone switch, which I just love the way they did this. Um, they did this with high and low tone. You would think that's for speaker uh, or, or for receive audio. No, it's actually to switch between your bands here. And then of course the all ever useless channel nine switch, which on this radio was replaced and used uh, for the um, for the uh, Roger Beep because these come with the Roger Beep that's permanently on. And of course, I mean, I love Roger Beeps. There's a lot of us out there that love Roger Beeps, but not everybody does. So you want to be able to turn that sucker on and off. And of course, it has the best Roger Beep ever. So anyway, and then our rotary um, channel selector. And just for giggles, I have my old butchered up uh, Superstar from the early 80s. This is my very first export radio. I love it. But look, there we go. See, on the band switch, it was low and high. They actually marked it correctly. This used to be a ever worthless Channel 9 switch. And so I just took the eraser, 
scrubbed it out and that was my Roger beep on and off. All right, so anyway, there you go. Um, we'll take a look at the back panel real quick. Okay, so on the back panel, we have the uh, ever famous Uniden three pin power plug here. We have the FC plug for the frequency counter in here, which is was kind of a new thing that they added. I believe, I want to think that was back in the, gosh, in the 90s sometime. Um, they don't have it on the old school version. So, um, and I like that they did that. However, I didn't really mind running these radios without a frequency counter. It wasn't a big deal. I had an outboard frequency counter and I just kind of knew, I had a little chart off to the side and I just kind of knew if you were on band A, and channel 23, you were on 23. If you went a band up, you were on channel 70. All right, so we have our external speaker plug. And, you know, for you guys, most all these Uniden uh, clone exports and everything, and as well as the old Unidens, if you're feeling around in the back panel and you want to plug your external speaker in, it's always in that, what, that top left corner or top right quarters you're looking at from the rear, top left from the front. And then the CW jack right there for your CW key. And then, of course, the um, identification as the Transceptor CB27, which always fascinated me with this. I, I kind of like that this was a Euro market thing. All right. And yes, we've done a little bit of butchering on this, but um, this was at my request and at my doing. So here we go. This is a um, 10KC switch right here. And this is SSB ALC um, delete because uh, I like all knobs fully clockwise, and that's just the way I roll. I just like to sp speak up and be heard, so there you go. All right, let's take a look at the innards. Okay, well, let's take a quick look at the internals of this. So first off, as we can see, it's an EPT3615C. So it's silk screened a little different than some of the other rigs. Um, there's not much of a difference in this between the EPT 3614 and whatnot, although the 14 had, um, oh my gosh, the driver in the final was like a 2166, uh, 2316. These transistors are unmarked. You can't read the writing on them, but these are IRF 520, so a 520 driving a 520. This little switch off here to the side is for sideband ALC um, cut back, not deleting it, just cutting it back a little bit. This switch here is the 10K switch. I didn't want to have any front panel switches. And um, yeah, so pretty basic inside, standard build. Um, you know, it looks a lot different than the, uh, than the older version, which we can take a look at here. But... Um, yeah, interesting. You know, these are not quite as stable as the old ones, and I don't really think these are quite as good as the older uh, versions. But um, nevertheless, it's still a good radio. You know, they use the same board in some galaxies, like the Galaxy 55 HP. Um, that's just an AM FM CB. And, you know, they just add and delete parts when they're going from uh, AM to FM. One thing that I think is kind of cool about this particular European version, because it has to conform to, you know, Europe certain European standards in, in some countries over there. And they've just kind of put this little low-pass uh, filter on. So basically it's like a low-pass TVI filter. Now something interesting about this, this is pretty cool. And I'm going to do a video on this, so... I'll show you down the road. Um, I don't really run too many linear amplifiers. However, uh, when I use this radio on my base station, um, I noticed that um, when I drove uh, my amplifiers with this particular radio, even though I was putting out the same amount of RF power, my amplifiers would not get as warm as quickly when I used this radio, say, versus a Galaxy or something like that, or any of my other radios that did not have this particular filtering. So I guess my theory is here, and you can tell me if I'm up in the night or not, my theory is here is this output section of this radio is just cleaner harmonic wise. Um, and my amplifiers just run cooler. And I believe it's due to the low pass filter 
that's been into this. You know, amplifiers amplify what they receive, garbage in, garbage out. So if it has a cleaner output, um, less harmonics and whatnot, I imagine that it's going to make my amplifier run more efficiently. And that amplifier is not having to strain and stress to run those uh, or amplify those other harmonics. So I have not put this on my little makeshift spectrum analyzer to check that out. And I should probably do that when I get my bench set back up. But however, I just thought you guys would like to see the insides of the newest version of the um, Superstar 3900. Why do I have this old beater up here? Well, this was my original Superstar 3900 that I bought back in around, gosh, I want to say about 1984. Um, you know, I used to buy from H&Y Electronics in the days. Does anybody remember H&Y? That's pretty cool. That's old school stuff. I wish I still had some of their booklets. Anyway, as soon as I saw these things come out, I'm like, wow, I'm going to ditch my Cobra 148. I'm going to get one of these new, you know, Euro export radios. So it's exactly the same layout. And this is why I I just, I love 3900s. These are great. Now I gotta be honest with you, this has a little bit different sound, a little bit more of a noise floor than this one. This one's dead quiet. This one's a really nice receiver. Um, but, you know, over the years, Ranger kind of cheapened up. The filtering's a little different. And um, yeah, there is a difference in sound quality for sure. However, this one runs and mine bit the bullet years ago. In fact, I need to get back into that. I just haven't paid much attention to it because I've just had other projects going on. But this one motorboats uh, when I transmit. So oh, we need to fix that. Something that I added on here back in the day. So as you guys know, I'm an old school car audio installer. I've been into car audio since literally the early days, since the late 70s, early 80s. And what I did is I took an old car stereo equalizer. Remember how they used to have the LEDs that would go like that, bounce with the music? Well, I took one of those boards out of a car stereo equalizer and then cut in um, in the face here and installed some rectangular LEDs. And what I did is I set that up so when you talk, it modulates and it jumps, gives you a little LED light show here. And this third or this last red LED is is just set at a little over 100% modulation. So you could tell if you had audio. It was really cool back in the day. And then my good buddy Dan, who uh, was an engineer out at um, DOD, uh, Digitech Industries, he built um, um, rack gear, you know, like uh, uh, for commercial PA audio and stuff. And he designed a split kit for this. So we could um, split frequency on that, which was really cool. We used to do that back in the day on channel 23. Let's see here, what did it, what does it go down to? Okay, so 26055. And I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty reasonable. I mean, some of the other exports, right? They go down to like 25.6 or something like that. You don't need to go down there. Why? Who goes down there? Uh, I mean, it's not even into 12 meters yet, is it? No. So, I mean, I, I think that's just kind of dumb. I think it's kind of a waste. Um, however, uh, crap, for giggles, what does my, um, what does my Saturn go down to? Yeah, so the Connex will go down to, uh, 25615 ish And that's always off frequency, too, but that's just the way it is. You know, these, these radios were, are a little drifty. I mean, they're, you're really asking a lot for a radio to have all of these, um, channels in it. And yeah, it's, there's going to be kind of a compromise. She's going to be a little drifty here and there without getting technical. So anyway, that's that. All right. Well, let's see what this unit puts out now. Um, this is tuned down just a hair. Um, it's, I, you know, I like to run my radios, um, um, kind of on the low side, so I don't tax them, don't uh, really, um, I, I like them to last. Usually my radios last a long time because, um, you know, as I learned with the other, with some of my other radios way back in the 70s, you start turning things up, things blow, the life of the radios go down. So understand, this is not going to be a powerhouse, all right? Um, if you guys have a radio and you want lots of power out of it, um, Put an amplifier on the back of the thing. I mean, that's what amplifiers are for. All right, so let's check out the power on this puppy. Let's go back to 20. 
27205, that's what I would consider mid-band of any operational rig. Let's go over here to the meter and see what we got. So we have about three watts output here. Yeah, a radio banging up to, uh, what is that, uh, five? So from about three to five, uh, this is an RMS. All right, um, let's see here. Let's uh, go up here to 205. Hello, hello, one, two, three, four. Oh, I'll go to AMA. All right, there we go. Hello, one, two, three. All right, love those Roger beeps. Let's go into some PEP feel good Wattsuses. You want to feel good about your station? Let's put it in PEP. Hello, radio one and a two, and there's those swinging MOSFETs. Hello, radio. What is that? 24, 24, 25 watts, something like that. All right, let's go over to uh, single sideband. So we'll go to lower side. Hello, radio, and it's going to do about the same. Hello, radio, about 22 in PEP mode. Let's see. Let's take it out of feel good watts. This is see what we're doing in real time in real life. Hello, radio. One, two, three, one, two. And that's about how we do it. You know, back in the day, uh, I never had uh, anything that would read that would read PEP uh, watts. That's the way that goes anyway. Um, yeah. So, you know, not a bad performer. I still think it's a really cool radio. It brings back a lot of memories because it's a Superstar 3900. I like the front end of these radios a lot better. Yes, I'll put up with the drifting. I'll put up with many things. Now, I'm going to upset some folks out here, but I would much rather and have, all right, I've had uh, like the new President Lincoln 2s, uh, what is it, and all the different versions, and the old school President Lincolns and the old school uh, HR 2510s and stuff. In fact, a lot of my buddies were running radios like that, but I'm an audio guy. I've been a stereo guy pretty much my whole life, and and the deal is, 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 um, all the, my, my, I guess my take on this is all these CBs are going to sound good with the proper microphone and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not really worried about how I sound transmit wise, but I have to listen to this. I have to listen to other people, right? I mean, we listen with these things. So I want the cleanest front end that I can find. I don't want a bunch of digital noise. I don't want a huge noise floor. I really can't stand noise floors. Um, and, and the 25 tens, the, the Lincolns are just so doggone noisy. Um, I can't stand them. So I'll put up with a little bit of drift and I'll put up with not having a frequency counter. It's not really that big of a deal to me. So, um, I like radios like this. I would much rather have this than a Lincoln, uh, the, the, the brand new, you know, Lincoln, whatever it is, the V2. I've had them on my bench side by side. Um, I will say, however, there are some new radios that kind of blow me away and, um, and I'm pretty impressed with And Yeah, they're all digital and, and they, um, have all of the, the full features to them with the digital readout, um, and all that. And it's that big striker sidebander. Uh, what is it? The 955. I like that. I like that uh, radio. It's got a really good front end. It's all surface mount technology. I think they did a good job on that. Um, I like the uh, the little Quad 5. That's actually a really good radio. I did not want to like that radio uh, because I'm used to a front end like this um, or a front end like the uh, the Connex, so, which is an EPT 3600 board as well. All right, you guys, leave questions or comments below. Sorry this video ran so long, but I just felt that I had to do it. And um, I appreciate all my new subscribers.